Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tweaktown channel. I'm Derek Strickland, Tweaktown's gaming editor. Today Microsoft revealed a whole bunch of stuff about the Xbox Series X. One thing in particular that stuck out to me was the SSD storage technology. It's not all about the hardware though, not all about raw speeds. The software side of things is pretty amazing. Today we'll be talking about the Xbox Series X's new storage tech and how it revolutionizes console gaming. The SSD in its software stack is one of the most exciting things about the new console. The storage solution will empower developers like never before and change Xbox gaming forever. Today we'll be going over how important the SSD actually is for the system and the other software stacks that power it. We'll be covering six main points. Speed, the new Xbox Velocity architecture, direct storage API, sampler feedback streaming, intelligent delivery, and memory cards and external hard drives. First, let's start with speed. The first thing everyone wants to know about the Xbox Series X's storage is speed. Speed isn't everything though. In fact, it's just part of the picture, like raw CPU or GPU power, but it's still very important. The Xbox Series X's custom PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD will enable ultra-fast loading times through a combination of raw hardware storage might and heavily customized software. We'll be talking in depth about both parts today. The console has a one terabyte solid state drive. That might not sound like a lot, but Microsoft has lots of nifty tricks to ensure no space is wasted. The SSD can hit 2.4 gigabytes per second data transfer speeds of uncompressed files and assets, and up to 4.8 gigabytes per second with compressed files. This is an important distinction. The console won't treat all data the same. Uncompressed files are assets and data from unoptimized legacy games. The SSD is actually a big part of backward and forward compatibility upgrades. The Xbox Series X has two mechanisms to upgrading its games automatically boosting the games on a system level without any extra downloads, and upgrades released by developers in the form of patches. Think of these latter patches as the Xbox enhanced upgrades that developers rolled out to boost performance of current generation games. The enhancement patches give developers full access to the Xbox Series X's 3.8 GHz Zen 2 CPU, 1.825 GHz Navi GPU, and unified 16 GB of GDDR6 RAM pool. This access allows games to hit crazy perf like 120 frames per second, ray tracing, 4K 60fps, and more. A good example of the native upgrade is how Gears of War 4 Ultimate will automatically scale to native 4K resolution when played on the Xbox Series X. An example of a manually upgraded game is the Coalition's massive performance boost in Gears 5. We'll talk about that a little later. A manually enhanced game will load assets faster because the data sets are optimized for the console's new advanced velocity architecture. There's no information of what kind of memory is used, but we're betting it's DRAM-less QLC as a cost-effective solution. A bit ago we reported the Xbox Series X could use Fizon's E19 memory controller, which is specially designed chip for DRAM-less storage memory. QLC is cheaper and more reliable and eliminating DRAM on the SSD will also keep costs down. Now let's talk about the Xbox Velocity architecture, and boy is this exciting. Essentially Microsoft created its own architecture specifically to unify hardware and software together. It's arguably the most important part of the console. Without Velocity, the system wouldn't be able to hit insane performance. Like any console, the Xbox Series X thrives off of synergy. Every part of this next-gen console has been designed from the ground up to complement and synergize with one another. The architectures and software stack act like a glue that holds everything together. The Xbox Velocity architecture has one goal, to increase the speed in which data can flow between storage, RAM, the CPU, and to the GPU for rendering. The Velocity architecture gives developers instantaneous access to up to 100 gigabytes of assets at once. These assets are stored on the SSD as virtual memory and can be fed directly to the onboard GDDR6 RAM pool for processing. This also means up to 100 gigabytes of SSD space could be reserved for this purpose. 
Then again, Microsoft says Velocity will create an effective multiplier on physical memory that is, quite literally, a game changer. The Velocity architecture is an accelerated pipeline that perfectly complements the system's SSD speeds. The PCIe 4.0 SSD can deliver assets of up to 4.8 gigabytes per second to the 6 gigabytes of allocated RAM for CPU operations. The data is then passed to the CPU and then pushed to the GPU for rendering on the screen. The result is dramatically boosted access to data. This has tremendous in-game potential. Developers can push more assets in their game worlds, leading to more robust in-game immersion. We're talking more NPCs, more vehicles, more buildings, and pretty much everything else in a game. Imagine what Grand Theft Auto 6 will look like on next-gen consoles with its sprawling cities and crazy NPCs, or Ubisoft's new open-world Viking-themed Assassin's Creed. The possibilities here are literally game-changing. Devs can also feed assets for ray tracing and other effects into the SoC even faster than ever before. The Xbox Series X will use this unified velocity architecture to speed up games in every conceivable way, whether it be loading times or data asset management. Velocity also powers the new expansive quick resume functionality. The Xbox Series X can quick resume up to three enhanced games and around five to six games that use less memory. Next up, we have Direct Storage API. Direct Storage is also pretty exciting software tech that has massive implications for the console. Microsoft has developed a new DirectX API specifically for the Xbox Series X's SSD. It's called Direct Storage and it's a fundamental part of the new Velocity architecture. Direct Storage is a new input-output protocol that controls the hardware-based decompression system that's built onto the 7 nanometer SoC. The decompression system can deliver up to 6 gigabytes per second of decompressed asset data to other components. Hardware decompression helps mitigate large file sizes, which is important since the SSD is only one terabyte. This is roughly 931 gigabytes of actual accessible memory, which is probably even less with the operating system installed. The most important function of direct storage is freeing up CPU cores and CPU power. The software reduces CPU overhead from five cores to just one. Games have access to seven out of the total eight Zen 2 CPU cores available on the SoC. It's vital the CPU isn't bogged down by decompressing data. The CPU has much more important things to do, like churning high 120 frames per second. Now we have something new. It's called Sampler Feedback Streaming, or SFS. This is something I hadn't heard of before. Sampler Feedback Streaming, or SFS, is yet another tool in Microsoft's Velocity Architecture arsenal, and it also has tremendous potential. Basically, SFS lets developers give much more control over which assets are loaded into the system RAM memory. It's a way to efficiently deliver specific data to the GPU as it's needed. This reduces waste and redundancy. SFS is another big measure that helps keep the system optimized and running smoothly, and most importantly, keeps data usage down. It works in tandem with the hardware and software to ensure games load and run better than ever while shrinking the data footprint on the SSD. As games get bigger and bigger, this becomes much more important. Anything that gives developers even more control over what they're doing with their games is tremendously powerful. It will translate to all kinds of interesting things and basically is a huge part of the new Velocity architecture. You can see how all these things come together to make a unified, unique, and much more importantly, synergized piece of hardware. Intelligent Delivery is yet another interesting tool. It basically works alongside SFS and the Direct Storage API. Intelligent Delivery gives developers power, flexibility, and control over asset management. Basically, Microsoft is giving every developer the option to carve up their games and let you choose which portions you want to install. We've seen this with the Master Chief Collection. The game will let you pick which games and which modes you want to install, whether it be campaign, multiplayer, or firefight. This is actually something I predicted, and it's great to see it coming to fruition. Games are getting absolutely massive. Red Dead Redemption 2 is over 100 gigabytes. Modern Warfare is just ridiculous on all platforms. This is more gamer-oriented, but it's also a way to further keep SSD usage down. Finally, we have one of the most surprising announcements of today's reveal. 
Memory cards in external storage. The Xbox Series X will use one terabyte memory cards for expandable storage. While memory cards is kind of a misnomer, they're basically mini SSDs. The cards, carts, or SSDs, whatever you want to call them, may use the compact CF Express solutions used in modern cameras. Seagate will be the first to release the new Xbox Series X expendable memory cards. These mini SSDs deliver the exact same performance as the internal SSD. They're optimized and scaled to perfectly replicate the same software and hardware functionalities as the internal drive. But what about those external HDDs you have lying around? External hard drives will still be supported on the Xbox Series X, but there's some big drawbacks. Running a game from a hard drive negates any Xbox Series X enhancements that game offers. There's a big performance disparity between a hard drive and the Xbox Series X's SSD. Running the game on an HDD will likely make it revert back to its non-enhanced state. Remember that smart delivery automatically determines which version of game you can play on your Xbox. If you run an HDD, the smart delivery mechanism should determine that you should run an Xbox One version of that game. Also remember the Xbox Series X won't have exclusives, but it will have exclusive patches that enable exclusive performance on the console. If a game is optimized with enhancement patches, those patches will be moot on an HDD. These enhanced games depend on the Xbox Series X's storage hardware and velocity architecture to hit certain performance factors. Certain things won't be possible on an HDD. For example, the Coalition got Gears 5 running at over 100 FPS on the Xbox Series X, complete with ultra PC preset settings and ray traced global illumination effects. That kind of experience won't be available on an HDD. So you can't get away with using your external drives as a backup for the Xbox Series X games and expect next gen gaming. If you have an Xbox Series X and you want to expand your memory, you're going to want to buy these SSD cards. There's really no getting around it. You can't get away with using your external drives. You just really have to buy these expendable memory modules. Now the real worry here is the cost. CF Express cards are not cheap. Microsoft has not revealed pricing of the console or expendable memory solutions, and we might not hear that until E3 or thereabouts. But really don't expect these things to be cheap, even if they use QLC DRAM-less memory. That about wraps it up for the Xbox Series X's revolutionary storage technology. The conjunction of the hardware and the software is truly impressive, and I believe the SSD technology, along with its new architectures, will enable a new gateway to gaming experiences like we've never seen before. We're going to see all kinds of crazy things, expanded worlds, more NPCs, greater physics systems, ray tracing, we're going to see VRS, SFS, all of, you know, all the acronyms, everything, alphabet soup, it's going to be crazy, 4K 60fps. Now I'm really more excited about 1440 60fps and 1080 120. Those are really going to get me excited and I really want to see old games upgraded to insane values. I want to see Halo 5 running at 120. You know, I want to see all kinds of ray tracing, all kinds of amazing effects. But ultimately, all of these things would not be possible without the SSD technology and the architectures that underpin it. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the TweetDown channel with more gaming news.